You're watching North Alabama's News Leader. This is News 19 at 6. A dramatic end to a manhunt that has captured the nation's attention for more than a week now. The search for Vicki and Casey White has ended in Evansville, Indiana. Welcome to News 19 at 6. I'm Emily Forrester. And I'm Greg Screws. The two fugitives, one a murder suspect, the other his jailer, was they were chased down and caught in Evansville. This happened on the same day U.S. Marshals located a vehicle the pair abandoned in Evansville last Tuesday. The search for the pair ended in a car chase with the vehicle rolling on its side and wrecking. Both Casey and Vicki White are now in custody, and according to the Vanderburg County <laughs> Sheriff Dave Wedding, Casey surrendered himself, and Vicki White was taken to the hospital with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. However, he did not know what part of her body she shot. Now this all started with their escape from the Lauderdale County Jail 11 days ago now. During that time, investigators say the pair traveled nearly 300 miles away. They first ditched a vehicle in Williamson County, Tennessee near Bethesda. The two then made their way north to Evansville, Indiana. Authorities were tipped off to their possible location after the manager of a car wash saw the two abandon a Ford F-150 at that business. The manager then alerted a authorities and U.S. Marshals started to search that area for Casey and Vicki White. The U.S. Marshals said not to show what they're driving because I've got her picking him up on surveillance on my cameras. And I told him, I called him back. I said, I got her. She's still with him. She picked him up. And he said, we think they're still in the Evansville area. Obviously they are. Vanderburg County Sheriff says after ditching the F-150, the pair was driving a Cadillac truck. Now the sheriff added he is happy to get two bad people off the streets. Uh, we gained information that a vehicle matching the description of a suspect vehicle was near our sheriff's office. So the U.S. Marshals Task Force and deputy sheriffs went to the area. Uh, soon thereafter, the male and female fled in a vehicle on Highway 41 northbound, went past Highway 57. As you can see, they turned here on Birch Park Drive. They came through this grassy area. Uh, the, the Marshals Task Force officers intercepted them, actually collided with them to try to end the pursuit. Uh, when this occurred, the female driver of the vehicle shot herself and the passenger was injured uh, not too seriously. Uh, they've both been taken to local hospitals to be uh, examined uh, for their injuries. Uh, her injuries are very serious. Uh, I don't know the true extent, but I want to commend the Marshals Task Force uh, for being here and, and working diligently with the Vanderbilt County Sheriff's Office to put two bad people uh, and get them off the street. Well, News 19 Shoals reporter Addison Wilman has been following this case since the beginning. He joins us live now from Florence. What's the latest, Addison? Lauderdale County Sheriff Rick Singleton was finally able to announce this evening that longtime employee Vicki White and capital murder suspect Casey White have been captured. The pair left Singleton's jail on April 29th, and they weren't spotted by law enforcement again until today. The manhunt stretched over three states and 11 days. The first car the pair was suspected to have used was located on Friday near Spring Hill, Tennessee, but it turned out it had been abandoned just a few hours after they left. The biggest break came today when marshals descended on Evansville after receiving word of a vehicle and suspect descriptions. Sheriff Rick Singleton said he finally got to hold the press conference that he's been waiting for for more than a week. So this has ended a, uh, a very long and uh, a stressful and challenging week and a half. It ended the way that uh, that we knew it would. They are in custody. Uh, what I'm very thankful for tonight is that no one was hurt. Uh, no citizens were hurt. No law enforcement officers were hurt uh, as a result of this escape. Uh, Sheriff Singleton says he bears Vicki White no ill will, but she does owe him some answers. I'll continue to bring you the latest here tonight on WHNT News 19. For now, though, live in Lauderdale County, Addison Woman, News 19. Vicki White 
Casey White, last seen in Alabama on Friday, April 29th, and the two captured today in Evansville, Indiana, thanks to tips from the public. The U.S. Marshals, along with the governor's office, offered a $25,000 reward cash, bond, cash money and for both of their captures to follow along on our 11-day coverage on the manhunt. All you got to do, we've made it easy for you, is go to WHNT.com. Now, your weather authority forecast with Chief Meteorologist Danielle Dozier. Well, good evening. Happy Monday. We have the sunshine out there this late day. Here's the view from high atop Montesano. Plenty of sunshine. We've got temperatures ranging from low 80s to low 70s out in Florence and Russellville. We're looking at low 80s right now. Fort Payne at 76, double sevens in Scottsboro at 78 in Huntsville. Winds are between about 5 and 10 miles per hour. Dew points are in the low to middle 50s out across northeast Alabama. So a comfortable feel, but up over 60 across northwest Alabama. Slightly more humid there. Our outdoor dining forecast looking good through 8 and 9 o'clock and the winds are light and the air temperatures near 70 at 9. Coming up, we're tracking the heat and I'll let you know when that humidity increases. All right, thank you, Danielle. Gas prices were down in comparison to a couple months ago, but this weekend that took a turn. In Alabama, the average price is over $4 a gallon once again. News 19's Madison Neal spoke with an expert today and joins us now live with what we need to know. Madison. Emily, if you haven't filled up your gas tank in a few days, you might get sticker shock to do that. Today, I drove around Huntsville, and the most expensive price I found was $4.19 per gallon. That's something that Clay Ingram with AAA Alabama says even surprises him. On Monday, Alabama's average gas price per gallon, $4.03. That's up 18 cents a gallon from just a week ago and probably about uh, 12 cents a gallon just over the weekend. Clay Ingram with Alabama AAA says experts expected prices to rise ahead of summer travel, but... I thought it might get absorbed because we already have a pretty big cushion in that profit margin out there. As our crude oil prices uh, have not jumped up over the last week or so. They're, they're still a little over $100 a barrel, which is where we've been now for the past several weeks. So. This much of a, of a jump was uh, was a bit of a surprise. Ingram says crude oil prices play a big part in the price at the pump. The situation in the Ukraine has caused crude prices to jump up quite a bit. We're all pretty familiar with that story. Now, that's been in play now since February. But still, our pump prices seem to be quite a bit higher than they were last time. Our crude prices were at this level. Over the weekend, the European Union's chief executive called on the 27 nations to ban oil imports from Russia in a sixth package of sanctions. The, if Europe starts to uh, boycott Russian fuel, then, then that's going to change the global demand. And that's going to probably drive crude oil prices up even higher, which again won't affect our supply here in the U.S., but it will affect our prices here in the U.S. because we have to pay that global price. And Ingram says that while Biden's plan to release oil from the strategic reserve is helpful, it ultimately makes a very small difference in the price that you pay at the pump. Reporting live tonight in Huntsville, Madison Neal, News 19. April Autism Inclusion Month, and in that month, an announcement was made that a new sensory gym will be coming to the Rocket City this fall. We Rock, the Spectrum's Kids Gym, an international children's gym franchise, announced a new location in Huntsville. And Vanessa and Joaquin Tucker, the new owners of the gym, say they're excited to bring the experience to the Rocket City. The gym will feature several resources, including after-school care, birthday party rental, STEM and art classes, and summer camps. Alabama transgender law took effect today, but how long will it last? We have the answer to that question and we're hearing from local health officials coming up.
Now, your weather authority forecast. Sponsored by Greenway of the Shoals. No fees whatsoever on your next car. A new way, the right way. Greenwayoftheshoals.com. Welcome back. I wanted to show you the month to date rainfall in Huntsville and in Muscle Shoals. In Huntsville, it's 0.88 inches, so we are actually below average by a little more than a half an inch, and the monthly average to date is almost an inch and a half. Out in Muscle Shoals, we've had a little more rain, up over one inch, and we're actually still below average, though, by about three tenths inches. Well, satellite and radar, you can look here in our neck of the woods. We're going to be dry, at least for the interim, as high pressure continues continues to dominate our area. Low pressure across the pack northwest actually bringing some unsettled weather to them. And what we're looking at for us going into tomorrow morning is temperatures that are going to be cooling down into the low to middle 50s for places like Scottsboro, Albertville and Fort Payne, but low 60s across the northwest Alabama, across southern middle Tennessee, generally in the upper 50s, Huntsville down to about 59 degrees. And it will be a pleasant evening and a pleasant morning to start. How about your pool forecast? If your pool is in working order, I know, of course, most pools, public pools, at least open Memorial Day. But if you have one in your backyard, it's going to be a warm enough day for it. You're going to need the sunscreen and reapply that often with the sunshine returning south southeast winds between 5 and 10 miles per hour. Air temperatures already closing in on 80 degrees at noon and by 4 o'clock we're pushing mid 80s and across the rest of the area. Also looking at the warmth mid 80s in Athens at 85. Arab and Albertville about 83, low 80s in Fort Payne, Albertville, and also looking at low 80s there. Taking a look at our water vapor imagery, so we're looking at the moisture content in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And if you look closely, you kind of see this spin right here, this counterclockwise spin. So it's actually associated with a low pressure system. And if we look at our jet stream pattern, you can actually see right here that dip in the jet stream. So what's happening is, is we've got this big amplification in the jet stream that's uh, leading to this above average temperature that we're expecting to see in the next couple of days. And meanwhile, if you look at this low, what's going to happen is it's actually going to retrograde or move back to the west as we head later on into the week. And as that happens, that's going to break down the pattern just a little bit, enough to give us a slight rain chance on Wednesday. In the meantime, our future cast dew point showing that while northwest Alabama might be a little bit on the humid side over the next few days compared to the rest of us, Wednesday we're all going to see an increase in that humidity. You can see we're also seeing an increase in the heat. Here's the extended forecast for the Shoals and Sand Mountain. 91 on Wednesday out in the Shoals, 91 Thursday. Sand Mountain running in the mid 80s with a slight rain chance there on Wednesday. Sand Mountain also looking at slight rain chances for the weekend as is the Shoals. And here we're also looking at a slight rain chance on Wednesday. Just a couple pop up showers in the afternoon or evening and thereafter dry Thursday, dry Friday and more rain chances returning for the weekend. But overall, the story going to be the heat and coming up in the next half hour, a look at how close we'll get to the records. Thank you, Danielle. Alabama's law that targets parents and doctors who make medical treatment plans for transgender youth is now in effect. Doctors who provide gender affirming care say some patients may leave Alabama if the law isn't overturned. State Capitol reporter Maddie Beer Temple has more on the law's impacts. Doctors at Children's of Alabama are figuring out what they can and can't do under this new law as they await a ruling from a federal judge. So our hope is that this law is in effect for a mere few days. Dr. Marissa Ladinsky co-leads UAB's gender clinic, which sees about 100 patients. She says they've put safeguards in place so those with existing prescriptions can still get refills since pharmacists are not penalized by the law. We have ensured that youth who are receiving medication and who are soaring and healthy and whole on that course of therapy will not be in any way cut off from it. Dr. Hussein Abdul Latif worries if the law stays in place, it could worsen self-harm behaviors among trans kids or force families out of state. I was contacted by one parent who uh, just moved into the state and then moved out of the state um, or is planning to move out of state to uh, a state like a good bit um, in a safe zone area where there is not a, a threat of, of such a legal uh, thing. Laws like this could be having impacts outside the doctor's office too. Those at the Magic City Acceptance Academy say more students want to enroll. The public charter school provides a quote LGBTQ affirming learning environment. Principal Michael Wilson says they're adding 110 seats next school year and it's filling up quick. 
already up to 120 applications. So uh, the answer is yes. Um, as people find out who we are and what we're all about, the, the, the interest certainly is there. Judge Lyles Burke is expected to rule on whether to put an injunction on this law by the end of this week. In Montgomery, Maddie Beer Temple, News 19. In other, in other news, Wayne Farms in Decatur is now recalling over 580,000 pounds of ready-to-eat frozen chicken breast fillets. It's an expansion of a previous recall of almost 31,000 pounds of the product. The poultry establishment reported that the chicken breast fillet products may be undercooked. The chicken fillets were shipped nationally, nationally to distributors. It was also distributed to local restaurants as well in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. The issue was discovered when the company received a consumer complaint that the food appeared to be undercooked. No confirmed adverse reactions has been, they've been found at this point. Consumers are urged to refrain from eating the chicken and restaurants have been asked not to serve it. The USDA said the food should be thrown away or returned to where it was purchased. A former Alabama running back nearing a return to the football field. We're national champion Bo Scarborough will suit up in 2022. That's coming up in sports. One minute. Okay. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yep, you got me. Coming up tonight on News Nation, the latest on the war in Ukraine. For a preview of those stories and what else you can watch on News Nation, here's Dan Abrams.
Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. A bombshell report from the New York Times that the U.S. is feeding intel to help Ukraine kill Russian generals. Did the Times think twice about reporting information that could lead us into World War III? I'll bet not. That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live. And you can watch News Nation tonight on the cable and satellite stations you see listed on your screen there. Now, Tennessee Valley Sports with Rocco DeSangro. The college football playoff will stay at four teams for now and for the foreseeable future. Talks of expansion were put on hold after a 12-team proposal was brought to the table and shut down. So until at least 2025, the four-team format is here to stay. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey, who is in favor of a 12-team playoff, is completely fine with the CFP staying at four teams, telling reporters Monday, quote, the conference will thrive at four. End quote. Yes, the SEC could benefit tremendously from expansion, but Sankey says it's not healthy for the rest of college football. Sankey used the 2022 National Championship as an example as to why the SEC will thrive, saying, I was sitting there watching the National Championship, and I thought, they just thought, I wasn't serious when I said we can leave it at four. People apparently didn't take me seriously. Sankey went on to tell reporters that the SEC is the only conference to place at least one team in the CFP since its existence. There's a good shot that could happen again in 2023. Two-time national champion Bo Scarborough is expected to return to the Yellowhammer State to continue his professional career. According to multiple reports, the former Alabama running back will join the Birmingham Stallions. Scarborough's last NFL regular season appearance came with Seattle back in 2020. The Stallions take the field again this Sunday against the Philadelphia Stars. UAH baseball beat one seed Delta State 7-3 to move on in the loser's bracket of the GSC tournament. Cody Kaiser pitched a gem. Complete game, allowing three runs and striking out six. Jeff Hunter put the icing on the cake with a three-run blast in the eighth. The Chargers will face eight seats shorter Tuesday at 11 a.m. So Decatur Heritage is one of eight Tennessee Valley teams that will take the field this week in the state baseball semis. And the two guys you're about to meet are a huge reason why. Cole O'Brien and Nash Rippin will both continue their playing careers at the next level. O'Brien is headed to Columbia State in Tennessee, while Rippin is on his way to Wallace State. Signing day today, semis on Thursday. Huge week for both guys. Can't even, can't even describe it. It's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just, you know, all the, all the work that goes in uh, and, and, you know, everybody else that helps you along the way. It's just great. Uh, you know, the process has been long, uh, really long, actually. And, you know, just tried not to get frustrated. But, uh, you know, today is such a special day, having all my family friends here and uh, pretty much signing the next couple years of my life away at school and uh, couldn't be happier. Rippin, O'Brien, and the Eagles go head-to-head -head with Mars Hill Thursday night in the 2A semis. And we're talking high school baseball playoffs. Mm -hmm. I believe there's three uh, series semifinal-wise featuring two Tennessee Valley teams squaring wow. off against each other. Mm -hmm. So... It's really awesome, and it's a testament to the talent we have here. Mm -hmm. I know who one of them is. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Yeah. My tigers, That's a good thing. My tigers yeah. be there. Hey, back to the Bo Scarborough story, though. Yeah. People don't understand how big Bo Scarborough is. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a monster. He's, like, I've seen, you see, there are pictures you can you can Google with him standing next to Derrick Henry. No, mm. I'm, I'm not saying he's as good as Derrick Henry, so don't send me the emails. <laughs> uh, but Bo, but he's he's... He's significantly bigger than Derrick mm. Henry. He's a big And Derrick Henry is large. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a large man. <laughs> and remember yeah. him watching him play? He, he's yeah. faster than he looks as well. Yeah, absolutely. So. I hope that'll work out. Yeah. I hope that'll work nice. out for him. All right. And again, Parcel Tiger. <laughs> we'll keep you posted. I will make sure Rocco keeps you posted. <laughs> and we'll see you at 630.